Hello, and welcome to the Thrive Mindset Podcast. I am so glad you are here with me. My name is Carrie Dale, and I am your host. I am an entrepreneur, author, podcaster, manifester, and motivator. And I am on a mission to empower you to create the life of your dreams. If you are looking to uplevel your life, relationships, finances, productivity, and success, you have come to the right place. I will share with you tools, resources, strategies, my failures, and my successes that have all helped me achieve the life of my dreams. It is my goal with this podcast to help you see your potential and empower you to create the life of your dreams. So let's get to it. Welcome back to the Thrive Mindset Podcast. I'm Carrie Dale, your host, and it's a new year. It's a new month. It's a new day. It's a new everything. And today I want to talk with you about goal setting and dreaming and intention and all the things that a lot of us do at the beginning of the year. But unlike many people, I really don't do New Year's resolutions. Why? Because I think that they're synonymous with failing. I think that most people who set these resolutions have great intentions, right? They have great ideas. They want to lose 10 pounds. They want to get a new job. They want more in life. But unfortunately, they set those resolutions because, well, the world, their environment, people around them say they should. They're not doing it because it's really what they want. And they're not doing it with the right mental state behind it. They're just doing it because, oh, it's New Year's. So what ends up happening, right? They they get a week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month if they're lucky into their resolution. And it slowly fades. The excitement goes away. They get distracted. They find reasons to not do it. And it just ends up being another thing on their list they didn't do. Let's just back up for a minute because it's been a hot minute since I've been on here. I wrapped up last year with my final podcast just before Christmas, and I did this on purpose. One, because I knew that it was about to get super busy with all the family events, all the holiday parties, all the celebrations. And I know that after raising four kids and and wanting all of these experiences to be perfect for my family, that this time of year can be really exhausting for me. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Like I love every minute of it. But because of that, I didn't want to bog myself down. I didn't want to be distracted. I wanted to be super present. I wanted to be with whomever I was at with in that moment. I wanted to surround my family with all the special things that they have come to know and love. And I didn't want to be tired doing it. And I also know that stopping and spending time with my friends and family is really important to me. It's something that fills my cup. It's something that gives me joy. It is, it is just magical to me. So I made a choice and I ended the year of Thrive Mindset podcast with a very special guest, Mary, whom I hope that you all were encouraged by, inspired by. And most of all, I have no doubt that that woman is saving other women's lives. So if you missed that one, I suggest you go back and listen, especially if you are a woman because it might just save your life. But anyways, because I made the decision to stop at the end of the year and just take a break, I also had to confront that choice and realization that in doing that, I wouldn't be preparing all of you who listen for the new year and setting goals, finding your intention or discovering that big thing that you're gonna do this year, which meant that many of you might have felt lost or like I let you down because that's, what I do, right? I help you achieve your dreams. I help give you focus. I provide the tools to motivate you and excite you and help you create the life of your dreams. And maybe some of you did feel that way. Maybe you did feel that I I should have ended differently. But I hope after you listen to today's episode that you will rethink this because I'm here to tell you, you start when you start, not when the world says you're supposed to. You begin your year, your start, your venture, your journey when you want it. 
It could be a Friday. It could be a Saturday. It could be a Tuesday. It could be Wednesday. It could be the last day of the month. It could be the middle of the month. It can be whenever it is that you feel called to start. That's when you start. You don't wait for the new year to ring in. You don't wait for a Monday morning because that's a good time to start. You start when you feel called. In fact, it's kind of funny because while I was weighing this decision on how it might impact you and me and anyone listening or anyone who really does love to start the new year with new goals and motivation, I I came across this message from a friend of mine, uh, Nat, Nat is a friend of mine who some of you may have listened to on the podcast when we talked about numerology. She is amazing at that, but she shared something about numerology and this year and how with the way the numbers fall that we really shouldn't be fretting about January because in numerology this year, it really, the new year really begins in February. And when I read that, I just... I just took a breath because for the first time I felt like it was so true. Like I felt in my soul that yes, that aligns with me. Like January doesn't feel like the time for me to start everything. Sure. It's definitely the time for me to do some looking back, some reflecting, some recalibrating, some re-energizing. It's definitely that time for me. And that excites me. But just to know that it's not just me and there's others out there that do also agree that you don't need to start the new year in January. Oh, that feels awesome. And when I heard it, I felt like I could finally end the year the way I wanted to with the podcast, focus on my family and not rush to put out new content or just to make a timeline that fits the mold. Because here's the thing, I don't like resolutions. I don't feel like if I were to guide you ahead of the new year that you would follow through. I most certainly feel that you'd be pumped up and excited, but that would fade in weeks and you likely wouldn't even make it through the year. And I was afraid that you would focus too much on it being the new year and not about it this being something you want and that you truly, truly want. And instead of all the rushing around to make this deadline, I could just take a moment to love my loved ones and myself and I could refill my cup, and then I could show back up as the best version of myself. That's giving you the best version of me as well. So here we are. It's the second week of January, and holidays are all wrapped up. In fact, I uh, just spent the day cleaning up my house, putting all the Christmas stuff away, and just restarting and refreshing. And hopefully you have taken some time for yourself too, taken time to clear things out, clear the clutter of your life, find some time for some self-care. In fact, if you've been doing my 21-day manifesting challenge, you would know that self-care is so important. So I hope you did some of that. But now, now is the time. Now we're going to get going. We're going to roll into this year and work on our dreams and goals and intentions and all the things that we're going to be working on so that you can manifest the life of your dreams. So let's dive in. This is going to be an ongoing discussion for the next few weeks. As you know, Jeff and I always take our triple R trip, our reflect, recalibrate and re-energize trip. And we usually do that towards the end of January. This year, it's getting pushed back a little bit further. It's still the end of January, but it's flowing into February a little bit more than I typically like. But I have a work trip, I have to take it, I've got to do it. So so this is what we're doing, we're adjusting. And we're going with the flow, which is totally okay. But that doesn't mean that we haven't spent some time doing some preliminary work so that we can make the most out of our time while we're away. And also, start getting our mind wrapped around the things that we're going to do this year and the amazing things we're going to accomplish. So I want you to take a little bit of time this week and do your preliminary work before we dive into next week. So do me a favor, close your eyes. I want you to fast forward to the end of December, 2024. Why? Because whenever you want to achieve something, you need to start at the end and work your way backwards. So 
Imagine yourself. Imagine where you are, what you're doing, what you're wearing, who you're with, how you're talking, how you're acting. Take a look around and see everything, every single detail around you. Remember, this is where you are wanting to be and how you imagine it to be at the end of 24. And really spend some time seeing it and feeling it. Because those feelings and those emotions, they're going to attach to that vision. And they're going to help you get to that future you. It's what's going to excite you. And it's going to be your vision moving forward. It's going to be the thing that you reflect on every day as you move throughout this year. So spend the time. Spend the time and take as much time as you need to get very clear on what this year looks like for you and what you look like at the end of it. Don't worry about how you got there. Don't worry about if it's possible or not. Just imagine whatever it is you want for you. For me, that vision is me sitting doing this podcast with an amazing guest who we're just kind of recounting the year and talking about all the things that happen and all the things that you guys are achieving because of this. For me, it's it's the book that I'm going to finally write. It is the courses that I I'm going to put out for you this year and I'll be sharing and reflecting on and be thanking all of you for it is the conversations of looking back at this year and knowing that it was magical. It was beyond magical. I mean, last year was incredible. Last year, all of this began. And this year, this year it's going to explode. This year is going to, well, It's going to empower all of you and it's going to empower me. And I am excited. And there's a whole lot more to that vision for me, but that will just kind of give you an idea of what I'm trying to get you to do. And once you are clear, like once you can really see it and imagine it, well, number one, write it down. Write it down in all of its glorious detail because you are going to be looking back at that every day. And then once you have the whole thing written down in great detail. Take some time and identify the pieces of that vision that are most important. And what I mean by that is identify segments of that vision that you can focus on. So in my example, I broke it down into four pieces. It was thrive, real estate, my health, and just me. And what I mean by that is I'm going to, I have certain things that I want to focus on within Thrive Mindset that are important. I have certain things within my real estate business. There are certain things about my health and well-being that I want to focus on. And lastly, there there are things that are just about me, meaning travel, continuing to better my French relationships, whatever it is. But there's just there's certain things that fall under just the me category that I'm going to work on. Actually, here's a great one. And it, it covers all of them. But but it does fall under the me and the me focus, which is I am no longer saying yes to everything that somebody asks me to do. I'm no longer doing this. Now, sure, there's going to be a lot of things I'm going to say yes to. And I'm not going to say no just to say no. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take a moment and think about the question being asked of me or the ask of me and decide if it's something that is going to be good for me or if it's good for somebody else. And if it's good for somebody else, I'm going to recognize that and I'm going to appreciate it, but I'm not going to just do it. I might do it if if I have time or if I'm wanting to help them with something, but I'm really going to take the time to decide if it's what I want to do. I'm not going to just commit to something because I'm a good friend or I'm good at my job or I'm good at whatever. I am going to make a decision based on whether I want it, whether it's going to align with where I'm headed and if it's something that I truly want. 
I think that so many women specifically fall into a bad habit of just saying yes or okay because they don't want to hurt their friend's feelings or they don't want to tell their boss no or they think they can. But quite frankly, you can't keep adding things to your life and be truly successful in all the things that you are wanting to do. You have to do things with purpose and intention. So that is what we're going to do here. We are going to spend the time getting clear on how you look at the end of the year. We're going to narrow that down to a small amount of number of things as you can to focus on. For me, it was four. For Jeff, when we sat down and did this this past week, he started out with seven. And he's got his narrowed down to, I think, four now, which is good because I feel like you can't be stretched too thin. You can't have too many things to focus on. Otherwise, you're going to be all over the place. You really need to keep that focus as narrow as possible. So do your best to narrow it down and be clear on what those things are that you're going to focus on this year. And then the last thing that I want you to do this week before we really dive in next week is find your word and intention for the year. And what do I mean by this? I mean, this is not, this is not a new idea. It's not a new concept. People all over the world for decades have been talking about your word of the year. But for me, that is not necessarily like the big goal I'm going to accomplish. It is more about a word that excites me, challenges me, makes me maybe a little nervous, makes me excited. It's a word that encompasses everything that I'm doing this year. It is a word that I will put in front of me. It is a word that I will use often. And it is a word that will keep me moving forward, unlike a New Year's resolution where I likely would lose my motivation and excitement. It is simple and clear and honestly takes a little time to figure out. Last year, ironically, my word was thrive, right? And it was for many reasons, because I wanted to thrive in life. I wanted to build thrive mindset. I wanted to help others thrive, like thrive described everything that I was wanting to do. This year, it's a little different. This year, I have some pretty darn big lofty goals in all aspects of my life. And a lot of it involves you. And a lot of it is just for me. But the word this year, the word that is going to get me through, the word that I'm going to focus on, the word that I am going to put all of my intention into and direct my energy to is empower. This is the year that I'm going to empower myself and I'm going to empower all of you. And together, we are all going to manifest the life of our dreams. We are going to see magic happen. This is it. 2024 is that year. And whether you start 2024 on January 1st, or you started on February 1st, or you started on the 15th or the 18th or the 22nd, whatever day you decide to start is when you start. And when you start, be clear. Be clear on what you're doing. Have that vision. Have the pieces that you intend to work on. So do me a favor. After you get done here, spend the week, spend time journaling, spend time walking, spend time thinking about all of these things. Go back and listen again. Whatever you need to do. But don't come back next week without knowing where you're headed this year and the things you want to work on. Because let me just tell you, this year is going to be exciting and we have got to have a plan and we've got to have focus and we have to have dreams and we have to have the plan laid out. Next week, we are going to chat about reflection and really take a deep look at yourself and this past year. What can you remove from your life to better yourself? What isn't serving you that you can say goodbye to? And what can you do more of that you're already doing that's great? There's a lot of things we can do to move us forward. And there's a lot of things that are holding us back. So next week, we're going to figure all that out. 
so that it can no longer hold you back and instead you can make leaps and bounds forward. I am so excited. I cannot wait. I hope that you'll follow me with this journey and you'll see this through and I look forward to what all this year is going to bring for all of us. And above all else, remember that I believe in you and you can manifest the life of your dreams.